Welcome to this video where we would be discussing about Spring Boot integration testing. Spring Boot is a great framework to create RESTful web applications. In this video, we would want to focus on integration testing. What we'll do is we'll set up a simple service using Spring Initializer, see the get service that we would create and the post service that we would create. We would run very quickly through these steps one, two, and three. Our focus in this specific video is on step four, which is integration testing. What we really want to set up is a couple of services which would allow us to write integration tests for. So let's get started. There are a lot, lot of articles on Spring Boot on our website, springbootshutorial.com. We would use one of those articles where we have a lot of examples regarding integration testing. This is the article, Writing Integration Testing for REST Services with Spring Boot. If these one-hour courses would be really useful, if you are new to either Spring or Spring MVC or Spring Boot, and if you are new to unit testing or integration testing, then these things would be really useful for you. These are Most of these videos have more than 100,000 views and are quite popular. Let's take a quick overview of the project we have created. So we have a Spring Services application, which is a Spring Boot application. And we have a Spring controller, which is exposing a couple of services. One is a get mapping, student student ID courses. And the other one is a post mapping. This is a post request. So what do these do? Let's take a quick look at that. When I invoke the URL, localhost 8080 slash student slash student one slash courses slash course one, I would get the details of the specific course. So this is what the get request, I mean, this is what the get service does. So this is what this method here, retrieve details for course supports. It supports getting the details for a specific course for a specific student. So it shows the course ID name and stuff. So that's the method which is exposed from here. The same thing would happen when I execute it from Postman. Postman is a great tool to run REST services. So if I do localhost 8080 student student one course courses, course one and click send, I would get the same response back in here. You can see that the status is 200. That's cool too. So basically, this is one of the unit tests that we would want to write. I mean, this is one of the integration tests that we would want to write. We want to write integration tests for this scenario now. So we want to launch up the server in the integration test. We want to hit the URL and we would want to see whether the response matches with this. So this is one of the integration tests that we would want to write. The other integration test that we would want to write is for the post service. So if we look at the post service that we have, the post service that we have, what we would need to do is we would use a URL called students, student one courses. So for student one, we are adding in a new course. So this is student one registering for a new course. So you'd see that in the body of the request, I'm putting all the stuff related to the course he wants to register for. So this is a new student who wants to register for a course on microservices. So he's saying, I want to register for microservices and these are the details of the course. And we are sending that as a body of the request. Uh, we are saying raw and JSON is the format that we are using in here. So we are posting this information to this URL. So to this URL, to the resource which are exposed at it, we are sending a post request with body of this. And we click, when we say, when we do the send, then if the request is successful, we get a status of 201 created. So that's the response. So the response is, okay, yeah, the resource requested resource is created. So that's basically what the post does. Post is used to create resources. So we are saying, I want a resource created with these details. And in the integration test, also we want to do something very similar. So we would want to do a post to a URL with some body and we would want to get a status of 201 created. And also we would want to check whether the URI to the new resource is written back. So let's say this resource is exposed at a URI, students, student one slash courses, coach one. So I would want that URI also returned along with a post service. So in the integration test, we would also want to check for that. So that's the couple of services that we would want to integrate do integration testing for. So if you are really interested in the, all the details of how to set up things and how to create this service, then I would really recommend you to look at the video on creating REST services. You will find a link below in the description of this video. All the code for this example is also just below the article. So the complete code example, including everything is in here. So 
everything is in here so it's easy for you to set it up um, let's take a quick overview of how to set up the rest services we'll not go deep into it the focus should be on integration testing so let's take a quick overview so the how do you create a rest services application with spring initializer that's the first point so you ju just need to go to http colon slash slash start dot spring dot io that's a great tool to bootstrap your spring boot projects so just go there so you'd see a web page like this enter group as com in 28 minutes spring boot and you can enter student services as the artifact and you can choose web and actuator and dev tools so you just go to the start.spring.io you should be able to figure out how to uh, enter these details in and click generate project once you click generate project a zip file would be downloaded to your hard disk so extract that zip file to any uh, folder on your local machine and then what you can do is just do a file and import existing maven projects and put in the folder that you extracted the zip to so just put that folder name in here uh, i mean the folder path in here or you can browse to that folder you can click browse and browse to it if you do finish here within few minutes the entire project would be set up and to run that project all that you need to do is say right click and run as java application so just go to the student service application do a right click run as java application then your application would be started automatically and once you have the basic application set up the instructions are clearly in this article you, we can implement the business service. The business services are basically when you talk about applications, we have multiple layers. So you have a business layer where all the business logic is. So the business logic for our application is related to students and courses. So we have a few methods to say, okay, get me all details of student. Get me all details of a specific course. Get me all details for a specific course for a specific student or add a course. So all these uh, things are supported by three classes so you can search for the course.java which is present in here so course.java is nothing but it has a id name description and the steps that you need to do to complete a course similar to that there is a student.java which has id name description and list of courses so what courses are is that specific student doing and you have a student service.java which is having a static list so this is our data store so we are not really talking to a database we talk to a simple data store and we initialize the data in here also what we have is simple methods to retrieve students uh, retrieve courses retrieve specific course details and add a course so these are i mean these are quite uh, simple methods you can spend some time with them and you should be able to understand them so as we discussed earlier the get service that we would want to write a unit test to is this one so when we send a request to this we get a response of this that's what we would want to test but before that we would want to launch up the integration test so to launch the integrate i mean we to launch the application we would need to do something so what is that how do we launch send a request to this and how do we check that the response contains this so if you look at the whole test that we would need to write the first part is the setup right so the setup part what i would need to do is to launch the application up so i would want to launch the spring boot application up and the second part is invoke that's basically firing a request to this url so i'll need to send a request to this url the third part is the verify the verify part is checking that i'm getting this response back the first part what we would do is we would use some so this is the complete uh, integration test for the get service i'll open the open it this up in our ide the first part is we would want to launch the application up so we are developing a spring boot application spring boot application needs spring context and the best way to create a spring context is by using spring runner so spring runner is an, a very simple thing uh, if you are familiar with spring junit for runner spring runner is an abbreviation to that so it just launches up a small test context for running a spring based application which application should we run that's basically what the spring boot test takes care of so spring boot test is used to launch up spring boot applications so we want to launch up student services application and also the other thing which we specify in here is something called web environment is equal to spring boot test dot random put we would want to use a random put to launch our web environment because this might run on things like continuous integration server where multiple applications might be running so instead of configuring a static port we can configure a dynamic port the other thing we can do is 
once the uh, port is assigned, once Spring Boot assigns a port to it, it can be auto wired in here and I can create the URL based on that specific. This is all that you need to launch up a Spring Boot application. So what it does, it launches this application up. So if you just have a small test just with these three, uh, these lines of code, you would see that you'd be able to easily launch up the context. But we don't just want to launch up the context, right? We also want to fire a request. So how do we fire a request? We use something called REST template. So test REST template is a great way to fire requests. So I want to fire a request to this URI. That's the one, right? So if you look at the URL which we want to send is this one. So localhost colon, instead of 8080, it would be a dynamic port. So what we would be doing here is we would we have a create URL with port method. This method would dynamically use the port which is in here to form the entire URL. So it will form, let's say the port which at which the application starts up, it is 1991. So it would say localhost colon 1981 slash student slash student one courses course one. So, and what kind of request do we want to send? The request we want to send is HTTP.get. We use an entity in here so that we'd be able to send headers through. So typically, actually I could have sent uh, a null in here for this specific thing, but uh, I would want to be able to add headers whenever I would want to. So I would want to have that flexibility in my test. So I leave the entity in here and I would expect a string response back. So that's what we are putting in as string.class. So whatever response it comes back, it would be converted into a string. So what we are doing in here is we have an expected string. So whenever, if you have no experience with writing unit tests, then I would really recommend you to spend some time with the unit testing course that we have. So JUnit and Mockito courses are right here. So spend some time with them. Uh, what you typically do in unit tests is say, I'm expecting a result of 100. So that's what we are doing in here. I'm expecting a result saying I'm expecting ID is course one, name is spring, description is 10 steps. If you look at the entire response which is written back, it's written a lot of details. But for me, I'm happy if these three are fine. So what I'm saying is, I'm happy if ID is course one, name is spring, and description is 10 steps. Those are the only things I would want to verify. And there's a great framework called JSON assert. This JSON assert helps you to assert uh, thing, JSON values. So in a JSON response, you can check for specific things. Here I'm checking for ID. Like the great thing about JSON assert is it's able to ignore spaces and things like that. So even if the response contains extra spaces or extra fields, it will be able to ignore them and it will be able to check and assert it. So I'll recommend you to play around with this expected string. So you can change instead of course one, put course and see how JSON assert reacts to that. So basically, if you look at it, there are three steps that we are doing, right? First is launch. The launch is in here. So we are launching a Spring Boot application. The second is we are firing a request that's here. And third thing is we are asserting that the response is as per our expectation. That's basically what you do in any integration test. So the next thing that we want to write test for is the post service. In a post service, we want to create a resource. How do we create a resource? The resource we are we want to create, what we do is we are putting it in here. So we are saying course course is equal to new course. So we are setting up the course with all the details that we want to create it with. Great thing about HTTP entity is to it, I can say course and it would take care of converting it into a JSON string. So what we are doing here is we are ex using a j j rest template dot exchange method. We want to fire a post request. So it's we don't want to do a get anymore. We want to do a post to this URL. What data do we want to post? The data that we would want to post is already set into the entity. What is that data? It's the details of this course. So we would want to post the details of this course as string, uh, sorry, we would want to post the details of this course to the URI, whatever response comes back, that's taken, uh, like converted into string and taken into the response. So that's, so the first part for writing the post service is again launch. So the launch is common to all the tests. So it's the same. The second thing is invoke. That's basically where we want to invoke the thing. So here is where we are invoking the uh, REST service. So we are saying to this service, we would want to send a post with the details of the course and the details of the course are in here. So these three lines in here are kind of the invoke. And the last part is the assert. So once we call the service, 
what we want to do is we want to check if there's a HTTP header call location. One of the thing about the post service is it like when I create a resource, what is the response I would need to send back? I just need to say like I've succeeded in creating the resource, right? So one of the good practices is to send the URI of the created resource. So let's say URI. So there was a resource which is created with a new URI. So let's say it's student student one slash course slash course ID. That's the new resource which is created. What would happen is in a typical REST service, it would return that in a header called location. So in the response header, there would be a header called location where that would be returned back in. So I'm getting that response header into actual and I'm checking that the actual contains a link to a resource. So I'm checking if a new resource is properly created or not. So that's basically your integration test to write your post. Now that's basically your integration test for a post service. So basically in this example, what we are looking at is how to write integration tests for Spring Boot applications. In an integration test, typically you would want to launch the entire context. So we launch the entire context, then we would invoke that specific URL and we would do the asserts. The asserts would be a little different in case of uh, get request because in a get request, you will have all the content you would need in the body. However, in the case of a post request, uh, you might need to get details from the headers and check whether they contain specific. At in 28 minutes, our focus is on making you an expert at Spring Boot. We have created a complete website on Spring Boot at www.springbootshutorial.com. The link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses, videos and the articles we have created on Spring Boot. If you love our videos, you'd love our courses too. Our courses have great reviews on Udemy. You can see some of the reviews in here. And there are also articles on basics of Spring Boot, auto configuration, startup projects, startup parent, less services, web application, all the code examples. We have Maven projects which are present, which you can directly import into Eclipse and start running them and other references as well. This page would be a great start for you to become an expert on Spring Boot. You might also want to visit our website www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than Spring Boot as well. Thank you for all the support you are providing us. We would not have grown to 52,000 on Udemy. We would not have such great reviews on courses on Udemy without your support. We would not have been able to grow to 28,000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support. We want you to learn and make best uses of all the courses that we have. Good luck and I will see you in the next video or the course. Until next time, here's Ranga from In28 Minutes signing off.